welcome back to the spider's web and in this video we've got a quite a different layout because we're going to be doing a painting yes yes i've decided we're going to do a painting which i wanted to do for a while which i haven't got around to but excuse me i'm just getting my uh, paints and stuff sorted out uh, now as you can see from palette cam here there's no paint on the palette as yet because well I'm not the kind of person who likes to um, pre-organize things I like to go with how I feel at this at the precise moment in time so I don't usually start with paint on the palette um, but what we have is our um, canvas which in this case is a canvas board it's Black on that side. Not quite sure how wide it is, all the dimensions, but you can go along with however you want. You might see a few little marks on here. You'll find out what all that's about a little bit later. But pop things down on the floor, and we're going to be doing a seascape, which I do quite like. So what I want to do first is find the paints. Now the first paint we're going to be using is Ultramarine Blue. Uh, we're using um, what you call it on this for this one. We're doing acrylics for this. For this just for the sake of speed more than anything else. So quite a big dollop of ultramarine blue. Um, we also want um, now you can't see the thingy but that's that's what we're using. It's Payne's grey. I'm going to use a dollop of that. Now a dollop is a technical term And that means basically that. <laughs> Next, we want this one, which is titanium white. And we want a nice big dollop of that. Excuse the sound effects, that is the paint and not me. <laughs> right, what we're going to do first off is I've um, got a brush that has been nicely wetted and soaked in a tub of water. It's a flat bristles brush as you can see. And we're just going to use a little bit of the blue, a little bit of the white, and mix them together and just make a horizon line. Now as you can see we're using a very low horizon for this. It doesn't have to be spot on perfectly um, straight because well you'll find out a little bit later new enough is good enough <coughs> so that is what we're going to start with and now we've got that done we'll dry our brush pop it to one side and then we'll get another brush uh, one thing I do want to do before anything else um, is using a little bit of uh, flow improver which is that it's a medium to stop the um, paint from drying well it allows it to flow a lot better a lot smoother so I'll add a little bit of that to the water and 
then we're going to start off by getting some of this blue, some of the white, plenty of white, because we want a nice, a nice sky. And what we're going to do is just As you can see, making little crisscross strokes, make a nice little sky up here. Add more white in, and that will add actor scan. And you want it a lot darker towards the top of the page or the, palette, or the canvas than you would towards the horizon line because obviously the top of the page. Or top of the canvas is going to be closer to you it's going to be what's directly overhead whereas um, the, the bottom is going to be furthest away and try and get it so that you have it slightly darker in the corners it sort of like acts as like a frame so if you can just Add much more of the dirt, much more of the blue, and um, oops, if you get any bristles coming off, don't worry about it, it's not vitally important. You can soon get rid of those just by using your, a corner of the brush. A spot of water, not all that much, and we want much more blue, and as I say we want it darker in the corners than we do anywhere else. We can even add just a spot of the black in the corners to make it that, well not black, it's Payne's grey which is a very bluish grey colour. Can add that to it just to increase the darkness of the blue towards the corners and I want to make it a nice sunny day so we're not adding any dark clouds oops what we do want to do though is get rid of bristles right, so we're not looking for dark clouds we're looking for nice pale sky Um, I want to bring this down as close as we can to the horizon. And uh, as we say, as long as it's darker in the corners and towards the top of the page, the better it's going to look. Um, it's a little bit more darkness in the corners because at the moment it's not getting that as dark as I'd like it. The um, the dark the paint's grey is just making it look grey, so actually bringing the depth of colour that I'm looking for. So I'll do that there and then as we come down we'll make it progressively lighter and lighter and lighter. And we can do that just by adding, not cleaning our brush, but adding quite a bit of white. Into the mix. And I'm just going to change your glasses because I've already just realised that I have my normal glasses on rather than my reading glasses. And when I've got my reading glasses on I can see things a lot more they're a lot closer to me obviously. And this does take a little bit of time Um, and 
obviously you can adjust the colours to suit you don't have to do the colours that I'm doing if you want to do a much paler sky you can use cerulean blue or cobalt blue it just so happens that the only blue I really actually have now is um, French ultramarine So, as long as you start off dark at the top of the page, stop the top of the um, canvas and go lighter and lighter as you go down, then it'll look right. Oh, yeah. now, I'm not going all the way down to the um, watch me call it the horizon line. When these dry a little bit more then uh, we can actually come back and add clouds to it if you wish to. I actually quite like just having that nice graduated blue. get an idea of where I'm going with this. It does take time but it's well worth it. The more time you spend on this the better it's going to look. Or just as long as you can aim for a nice smooth coverage we can add reds and oranges and yellows into the sky in fact a nice bit of yellow in this sky might be quite nice no 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 no, no. I've just realized add yellow to blue it can make green and that's not what we want for this sky is the first step done. A nice sky. Next what we're going to be doing is, well we are going to add a little bit of green, no it's a little bit of yellow sorry and it's, uh, we can't really see that but it's yet lemon yellow. And add a touch of that to our palette. We don't want that much. Now then The question is now, what colour makes a good green? And when it comes down to doing land, what colour is best for doing distant hills and mountains? Well, yes, you want a nice, a kind of a greeny colour. But you don't want it incredibly green you want it quite bluish so with that being said a little bit of the paint's grey a lot of the yellow will make quite a wonderful green because there's a lot of blue That's going to grey it down a little by putting blue in and if we add some white we need it to be quite a bluish colour because if you look at distant hills and mountains they're quite blue. So 
so that's what we're going to use and we're going to do just a very thin little mountain range on the edge here not all the way across however It's trial and error sometimes with when you're painting. I don't like making it all um, what you call it, saying you do this, you do that, and you do the other. Um, for the simple reason being is I like to keep everything nice and easy going, and. Um, you know quite spontaneous so there are some times where um, I will add colors together I'll mix one color and then somehow for some reason I may not like it so I'll change it slightly Um, I'm trying to make it look as though it's not just one um, one thing as you can see hopefully let me just zoom in a little bit on that hopefully now though you can see that I'm trying to make it look as though there's little areas of interest along that by adding different shades of colour. Um, so it does actually look as though it's not just one thing. There's, you can't see, I want it to be that distance, you can't see any detail but I want it to look as though there is something there and not just a flat piece of colour. Okay, I'll just zoom out it again. So that's that stage done over all of my thing. Now we are now going to go into our next stage which is the water. Now for the water um, we're going to be using again the um, ultramarine blue and the white, a little bit of the paint grey, but not all that much. And we want to mirror the sky. So from the from this part here, from the horizon line, we want it quite fairly pale, getting quite dark as we get down to this stage. Okay, so. We'll start off with predominantly white. In fact, I'm going to dip into that colour. Now, dip into the water that we put the um, what we call it in the flow improver, and I'm using the chisel. You know the flat brush that I showed you earlier. I'm using that one this time. And for that, I'm just going to go and unlike watercolour, um, where you want, if you want something to be white, you would actually leave it white rather than try and paint it with acrylics, oils. And these kind of colours, where you want white, you put white. Because 
with acrylics and oils you actually start from the darkest colour and work through to the, um, the paler colour so you'll put the shadows on first and then you put the lighter colour and the highlights on top now with watercolour you would start with the highlights and the paler colours and put the shadows on top because with it being watercolour it's very very translucent oils, acrylics and they're a lot thicker to use and in my opinion a lot nicer and easier to use as well um, now so right, we're going um, all the way across with this and you want it to be up to the, the line that you've marked off as the horizon line um, because you know that is the um, that is the, um, the distance where the obviously the, um, the sky hit uh, meets as it were land or in this case water so you know what the horizon is anyway and obviously it doesn't meet the water it's just it looks as though it does so I'm going to do that and as we get further and as we get closer in we're going to add more colours we're going to have a little bit of green to this not a great deal and when we do add the green we wipe it off and then go back into the white and blue and as we're getting closer and closer we're getting darker and darker with the blue um, so we just keep going and keep going and when we finish, got down to the bottom, we should be getting darker and darker. And then we can start adding waves and movement into the water. And I apologise, I apologise for the uh, sound effects from the table. So we don't want it incredibly dark too soon so if we do find that we have it dark add a little bit of white into that and we can keep going and keep going until we get down to the bottom of the canvas what I'm also going to do is add a little bit here I've just realised that we have missed a little bit of the um, the sky and the last thing I want to do is make it look odd because it's not so to say um, a watercolour painting so we don't need to make it um, so we don't need to leave white but what we do need to do is just as I say, make it progressively darker and darker as it comes closer and closer to us 
at all. When we get um, so close to us that we can actually see it as um, water, it is incredibly dark. It is almost, in fact, you can actually use um, straight uh, ultramarine blue. Now I am, as you can tell, ever so slightly out of practice in doing these videos because I've not done a painting video for a long time. So bear with me. <laughs> and I'm trying a completely different setup as well with having the three cameras. Um, so uh, hopefully you enjoy the video. And always try and keep the Um, the strokes in the water horizontal. Because the one thing we don't want to do is make it look as though the water is running off the side of the paper. And that is how it will look if you try if you do this in any other direction than horizontal. Um, Now, at the moment I am just putting the base colour in. We're not putting any movement in the water as yet. What movement we can do is just add a little bit of white to show ripples. And we'll just show it like that. And we've got a very light touch with the white and then smooth it out as soon as you've put it on near enough and then straight into again the blue. We will be adding um, ripples and movement into the water a little bit later but for now what we're all trying to do is just get the base colour on And again, we can nip into the green and add some of that. You know, we, we can add different colours into the water. It doesn't always have to be just blue and white. Depending on what colour your sky is, you'd have, you might have reds and oranges in here as well and yellows but with this just being a plain blue sky you just see the the color of the water and this rather than be rather than seeing um, any other color you just see the reflection of the sky basically in this case will just be shades of blue. And 
And again, we can go into the white and just add a touch here and there. And if you do actually accidentally make a splodge, always spread it out. A little bit of this water that we've been using with the McCall's in it, the flow improver. And that helps.
trying to rinse my brush out. Um, because I just I don't I just want plain. Um, ultramarine blue on my brush now. And I'm going to go straight across with this ultramarine blue. So when we get down to the bottom of the page and the water we want it as dark as we can get it. So I'm just going to try and mix it and blend it in with the previous colour so it doesn't look as stark a change. Um, now we can go into the previous colour and add a little bit more into it. And then back into the ultramarine blue. Now, in a moment, as I say, we're going to be going into making this look as though it's moving water. And we do that by adding darker colours into it. Now, where this is fairly dark, ultramarine blue. We will be adding a paint grey into this part, but we don't want it, as I say, to stand out and look completely stark. Um, what we're trying to do here is make a nice blend. So if we can get that, if we see anywhere where it looks as though there is a very distinct change of colour. Blend it in. Just like so. That is about it for this part. The next part of the job is to make this look, as I say, like moving water. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and make it so there's a little bit of the lighter blue colour over the top of this darker colour. Just a little bit, not all that much. And
Well, yeah, that is what we have so far. Next.